Seven years ago, I was sitting on a box. The box was about this high, pretty wide. It was an old box. It was dirty. It was ripped. It was uh, water stained. It looked like it had been through a war. I was sitting on that box in no man's land between two borders. About 50 meters behind me was a sign that said, welcome to Mozambique. About 50 meters ahead of me was another sign that said, welcome to Malawi. So I was sitting there and it was the first moment in weeks that I had some peace, some calm. There was nobody around me. I'm not an African, I'm very tall. I had a big box, it drew a lot of crowds. I was in no man's land, it was peaceful, nobody was around me. But I was also very tired. This box weighed about 30 kgs. It was big enough that I couldn't carry it. I literally had a rope and dragged it. And I'd been working probably two or three days to get it to that point. So I was tired and I was ready to quit. But then I remembered what was in that box. In that box was a machine that I built with my hands. In that box was a machine that I totally believed was gonna change the lives of 100 million people one day. So with that thought, I got up picked up my rope and dragged that box another 50 meters into Malawi and eventually into Tanzania seven years ago. And the reason I picked Tanzania and the reason this has been my home for seven years is because of this number. 130 children die in Tanzania, not every year, not every week, every single day from preventable sickness and illness. If only they had the right nutrients in their diet, they would survive, they would thrive. What they suffer from is not starvation. They suffer from micronutrient deficiencies. It's also called hidden hunger. Their bellies are full, but they're starving from the lack of nutrients that we need to grow, to be smart, to be strong. A child, especially here in a village with a compromised immune system, has very little chance of a bright future. So the problem here in East Africa, and Tanzania especially, everybody eats the same thing. The staple food is maize flour or corn flour. There's nothing wrong with that, but if you don't eat enough of the things around it, the colorful things in your plate, you will suffer, you'll be deprived of these micronutrients. So the logical thing is, if everyone's eating the same thing, they're eating a lot of it, if it doesn't have the right nutrients, then why don't we just put those nutrients directly into those foods? Well, this is pretty standard. In the West or the developing countries, and even here in Tanzania, what's called large-scale fortification or commercially produced foods staple foods like oil, sugar, wheat flour, maize flour, they have these nutrients put in. How many people know about iodized salt, right? It's quite common, it's what we need. The problem here in Tanzania though, only 5% of the maize flour is produced at the commercial large scale. That leaves 95% of the population dependent on small village level mills, some, some call it postal mills, or at the town level, for their daily maize, for their daily flour. So Sanku, my organization, was designed, was invented to address this problem. <laughs> so if you're wondering what a small mill looks like, a small flour mill, it's quite common in every village and every town. Probably the size of a small bathroom. Usually two operators operate it. The miller adds raw maize into the green machine called a hammer mill. It grinds it up, blows it out into a bucket or a flour bag. Then the consumer packs it away buys it, takes it home. Usually a mother feeds their, feeds their children. Very simple process, but for us, it was an aha moment. We thought, if we could build, if we could design a machine that attached to this small mill and automated the process of adding nutrients, key life-saving nutrients into the flour that people eat, we could reach a lot of people and we could save a lot of lives. And so that's what I did. I built this. This was in the box. This was the first one, the first machine I ever built. It was a big piece of metal, it weighed 30 kgs, and I dragged that around East Africa. The reason was, I wanted to visit as many mills as possible, hundreds of mills to install it, to stress test it, to make sure it would work, make sure it was accurate and safe, and make sure it was scalable. So the, the technology, this is what it looks like now, it looks a lot better, it's streamlined, it's plastic, it's over there, you can check it out. But the, the functionality remains the same. Basically, raw maize is added into one end. The condensed nutrients, vitamin A, B12, zinc, iron, depending on which country you, you're, you're fortifying in, goes into the other end of the dosifier machine. And out comes fortified flour as it's blended into the mill. Literally life-saving flour. 
So going back to each of the mills I visited in Rwanda, Kenya, Mozambique, Malawi, and eventually in Tanzania, I showed up seven years ago with this machine, the first one, after weeks and weeks of testing and traveling, uh, dragging it around. And within the first few weeks that I was here, for some reason, I don't know how I did it, but I was able to get a face-to-face -face meeting with the president, Kikwete. And I gave him my pitch, I told him what the machine was about, I told him my story, and I told him how this could literally save lives of millions of Tanzanians. And he looked at it, he touched it, he turned it around, he, he kicked it even, and he said to me, can you build one of these for every village in this country? And I said to him, absolutely yes. And people clapped. In my head I said, I absolutely just lied to the president. Because <laughs> at that point, there was no way. That was seven years ago. I had one machine. I didn't know what I was doing. I had an idea. It was just an idea. So fast forward today, seven years later, we now have close to 500 of these machines spread out all of Tanzania and East Africa, producing fortified flour for two million people every single day. And most importantly, mothers can have access, mothers can afford it, mothers buy it, take it home and feed their children. So seven years ago, I'll make the same promise that I made to the world that no matter how far malnutrition takes us, we'll catch them. We won't give up. And we won't give up until we can guarantee that every meal consumed by every mother and child contains life-saving nutrients forever. That's my promise. That's my idea. Thank you very much.